Welcome back, Fiber friends, to the Wool to Gold podcast. So this week's podcast is going to be once again a little bit different. We're just messing around with the format. We're seeing what people like. And today we are in my car, as I'm sure you can tell, and we're going to go on a few little errands. Have been just wanting to pick up some commercial yarn lately. I have a lot of really nice accent skeins of hand spun, and I just would really appreciate having a commercial base or two in a sweater's quantity to pull from as I move into these winter projects. So when we get back from this little yarn store trip, I'm going to show you my FOs and obviously any acquisitions that I make at the yarn store, but I want you to come along with me. I love my local yarn stores. I think they're fantastic, so I'd love to share them with you. All right, I found somewhere to park. Um, we are at the Blue Pearl in Madison, New Jersey. So let's go look at some yarn. Okay, so <laughs> the sun is rapidly setting and I'm not gonna go over the haul in the car. I'm gonna do that at home with proper lighting so you guys can see the actual colors of things that I got. But I did get some, not like sweaters quantities, but like sweater bases. I got, there wasn't enough exactly of a lot of the colors that I was most drawn to. So I went with some of the ones that had some of the higher yardages and then I did get a few like one-off skeins. I'm pretty happy with what I got. Uh, honestly, I did stay under budget for what I thought I would be spending today. Again, I knew going in that I was going to be getting a sweater's quantity of yarn. So I had allocated this budget to the side for a while. Again, I really personally, I prefer to budget out the fiber. And then if I come in, you know, a little under budget, maybe I'll get some additional things. Alrighty, so as I'm sure you can notice, um, it is the next day. I thought it would just be better to show you the yarn that I got in the in the right lighting so you can actually accurately see the colors because I tried to pick colors that I thought would look good on myself. That is that is something that I'm not always the best at. I'll pick out a beautiful color combination. It would be most flattering on probably someone that has different different tones and and better hues than I do. But I really tried to pick out some like cool toned bases that I'm going to look forward to working with. As I mentioned in the car, I didn't get like really a full sweater's worth, if I'm being honest, of either color. I, if you've seen some of my finished crochet projects, save this project, which mind you is entirely one color. I generally don't like to work in just one color. I like to work in lots of different colors and holding different strands together in kind of creative ways and making new textures and stuff like that. So for me, this is definitely like what I would consider a sweater's worth of base. I also wanted to talk about, just before we even get into, you know, whips or FOs or anything like that today, a little bit about you know, accessibility and, you know, types of materials. So as you might have noticed, I love to work with wool. I love, love, love working with wool. However, even though wool is still not really sold at, in my opinion, the price that it should be considering the amount of labor and care that goes into it, is a more expensive material to use. This, this is actually my only finished crochet sweater, only finished garment, and this is 100% acrylic. I used like, I'm pretty sure, I don't think it was a Karen cake. I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, it was Lion Brand. I couldn't tell you which yarn though. It was a yarn from years ago. And at the end of the day, like this is a really affordable, accessible garment. And I wear this all the time, like all the time. It's very warm and I can throw it in the washer dryer, which is awesome. And nowadays, or really more over the course of the past year, I've started to want to work with more 
wool and things like that but I do know that that is such like a privilege for me to get to work with some of these yarns and some of these bases. I do like to note that I'm gonna mention which skeins were on sale but uh, Blue Pearl does have like a sale or clearance area at all times and also runs little sales. The ability to shop um, almost exclusively at local yarn shops and like online retailers like Hobie Yarn and um, like Webs as well. Again, that was something that like I only recently got the ability to do. I definitely never did in college. And when I did, you know, I would buy definitely like a one-off skein. Normalize buying and collecting one-off skeins. I love a scrappy project. You get to support a local yarn store and you know what local yarn stores it's not just about buying yarn it's about going in and connecting with your local fiber community so even if you just buy one little mini skein that is out of the clearance section you know it's it's just wonderful that you're going and engaging with your local fiber community so that's my two cents on local yarn stores i know they are not always the most accessible places and again they were not super accessible to me I think until uh, my more recent years you know my later 20s as opposed to my early 20s so keep all these things in mind um when I go through these skeins that I have today because they are they are definitely a little bit nicer um a little bougie still might pick up something from an online retailer or maybe maybe even nitpicks do like wool of the andes i think that just like everybody else it is just a reliable workhorse yarn and i wouldn't mind having a wool of the andy sweater between you and i they have some really wonderful colorways as well so we're gonna be starting with sort of the one-off skeins that i got from specifically biche bouche so if you know this brand you know they generally are on the pricier side however there was a little sale going on on specifically the Biche Bouche. Not sure if it's going on there all this month or what the deal is, if it's just this week. I I think that I was getting there a little late based on how few of the colorways were left that were available in like a sweater's worth. But I did scoop up this really wonderful uh, medium brown. Uh, it's their Le Gros Lamb's Wool, so 100% lamb's wool made in the UK. If you don't know much about Biche Bouche, uh, they are woman owned. I believe it's two sisters. And then as it says on the label, this is a pure lamb's wool from Scotland from a family owned fiber mill. So really, really wonderful stuff here. Um, definitely wool and spun. I plan on using it uh, like as color work or something like that in accent skein for sure. One of the things that I really like about this wool that you might, the camera night might be able to pick up but might not be picking up is the fact that this is something that's dyed in the wool. So the wool is dyed first and then blended and spun. And so it results in uh, this kind of like natural variation that is difficult to get when you're hand dyeing. Next up that I got are just two skeins of La Petite Silk and Mohair. So this is 30% Mulberry Silk. 70% um, Super Kid Mohair. So these colors first are just two colors that I think are fairly flattering on myself. I don't think I'll be using these in the same project. If you're curious, these are 25 gram balls and they are 230 yards a piece. I probably should have mentioned what the, uh, what the yardage was on this. So this is 100 grams and it is 210 yards. These probably won't end up in the same project. I have lifted my mohair slash alpaca band. I had like a small, a small band on myself. I think towards, towards the end of the summer, I had just collected a lot of like silk, surrey alpaca, silk mohair, a lot of like super fuzzy stuff. And I was concerned that I wasn't going to work through all of it. So I put a little ban on myself for just a few months. And then recently I needed some like fuzzy textured yarn for a project. And I realized that my mohair alpaca, you know, stash is, it is depleted. So it's just looking very empty as we move into the winter. And so I picked up these two just to sort of cushion myself before I can make maybe a large purchase of more like affordable mohair base but i'm still shopping around even after this i still think i'm going to be poking around like again nitpicks uh hobie yarn and and webs during this time of year for their more you know like affordable skeins of yarn i'll just be seeing you know 
is stuff to, to buffer the stash, if that makes sense. So next up is definitely a common favorite, at least in like my neck of the yarn woods. So this is Brooklyn Tweed's shelter. Uh, it's nature's palette. I have it here in storm cloud. As you can see, it's just this really nice cool tone gray. I think this is gonna look really nice. I do have just four skeins of it. I would have picked up six if they had six left, but they did not. They only had four of this colorway. I'm not gonna try to match the lot number. I'm just gonna use this again as a base. If you know me, if you've seen my crochet projects, I, even when I'm saying I'm going more neutral with something, there's still gonna be lots of different colors and shades and color changes. So this is what I would consider like a base for a sweater because it's going to be like my jumping off point and it's like a slightly larger amount to start with it's not just like a one skein stripe you know what i mean don't if you don't know much about uh this specific yarn is a targi columbia blend it is super duper squishy it is worsted weight a 140 yards for i think it's 100 grams and it just it's super nice it has these little like blue and brown and light gray speckles that i feel like i feel like the camera is probably not not doing justice but i just fell in love with this and it's super soft i think it'll be really nice held with some again some hand spun and i think my plans is to put this towards a larger sweater project and then uh last but certainly not least definitely a well-loved staple in the community i just have kelborn woolen's scout in what color did i get i got a driftwood heather so this is just a really nice cool toned oatmeal not a warm toned oatmeal because i love oatmeal colors but some of them can really really wash me out so i have to play it played a little careful. I absolutely love these colors. It is 100% wool. I think it is just, again, a nice workhorse yarn at a, a slightly more affordable price point. I mean, again, it's no like wool of the Andes, certainly, um, but I think I think it's nicely priced for the color and quality and variety that you get. I just, I think this is a really reliable yarn. You get 274 yards per skein of yarn too, which is, is pretty hefty. And this is certainly going to be uh, a base for a future sweater or maybe a cardigan. I can just see so many different garments with this yarn and I would love to get like another sweater base and something similar to this, but it's so difficult with, when it comes to online yarn shopping, especially when it comes to like picking out tones that'll go well with my skin tone and not wash me out. I get washed out by by surprising colors. Like some pinks look really nice on me. Some pinks look absolutely garish on me. Oatmeals, again, fine line and certain grays. I have to be really choosy about my grays, which is generally why I try not to get things like this online. But also again, like, that Wool of the Andes price point is just chef's kiss. So yeah, now that I've shown you guys all of these, I do think I'm going to bring out the uh, sweaters worth of yarn that I'm planning on casting on fairly soon for a cardigan. Maybe if I ball it up before I start end editing this episode, I'll show you guys the balls of yarn, but that's all for the uh, little tiny yarn haul. Otherwise, I did promise I was going to show you guys whips, and I do have a few FOs you can see. They're drying back there in the background. I'll bring them forward to show them to you. But first, we're going to start with whips, and I am going to start with my drop spindle, which might be surprising to those of you who are just joining us, but uh, if you're not new here, you know everybody's always asking about the drop spindle. I have been a little bit slower with the drop spindle this week. It's been a really, really busy week at work can see I am filling it up. Last time you saw it, I think it was it was more on the green side. And I really do think I'm approaching kind of the end point. And I'm kind of over this colorway, but it's fine. I don't I don't mind it too much. It's just definitely the reason that I haven't been like reaching for this for this drop spindle. Because if you don't know, I have a really beautiful uh over four ounce skein of yarn in this colorway. And so I've I've just I've already worked with it a lot. I've had I've had enough of ocean, especially considering like this dyer doesn't exist anymore. I'm over it. Back at it with the 
Addy crochet hooks. I really do like the Addy crochet hooks. There's, there's something about them that's just very good. I didn't expect to like them because I mean, I mean, look at that. That doesn't, that doesn't look like something that'd be enjoyable to hold, that would be enjoyable to hold, but, but it is. I like this texture up here. Um, and I like too that the number is like printed on the bottom. You probably can't tell, but I hate when the number rubs off of a crochet hook. It's, it's the worst. I mean, I have a permanent marker on standby for exactly those scenarios, but anyway, these are both Farmer Daughters fibers. This is Bear Gulch. This is Moonshine. This is the Odang Alpaca base. This is their fingering base. This is the scarf so far. So I've added, I've added a nice amount. I think the last time you saw it, I would just had two squares. So we've got four squares. We're working on the third iteration of the maroon. So I think we're getting close to the halfway point, maybe. Definitely slowed down on this though, because I have another crochet cast on. If you know me, you know I have cast on itis and it's a problem. It really slows down my crochet makes because when I approach the end of a project, I will purposefully slow down because I don't have anything new cast on and I don't want to not have a project cast on. But then I just don't cast anything on. It's it's terrible. It's a problem. So we got ahead of it this time. I already cast on a second project and I really like it. I might end up finishing this project before I finish the scarf just because I am engaged with it. I'm enchanted and you're you're about to see why. It's very, very cute. Okay, so I went and looked up the pattern to make sure I get all the details right. So this is a pattern by Amazing Ish Grace. It's her lacy mohair, like silk mohair bolero tutorial on YouTube. So I'm using her tutorial because I found her pattern to be like a, a really nice base to easily modify for, I'm doing it in different weights of yarn, as you can see. Hers is, I think, in like a worsted weight yarn and then obviously like a really nice like cobwebby or lace weight um, mohair. So I'm using Chaos Yarns Organic Brushed Alpaca in the colorway Gracious. So if you follow me on Instagram, you already saw this. It's a really, really beautiful rust orange that does look nice on me as long as it's paired with the right color. So I wanted to pair it with something that was a little bit more of a, almost like a semi-neutral base, but with like pops of fun. I wanted this to be colorful. I plan on wearing these sleeves underneath my t-shirt in the winter because I have all these t-shirts and I essentially like only wear them during the summer, not in the spring, not in the fall, not in the winter because I don't have a ton of stuff that I like to layer under them. I know I have all these turtlenecks, but a lot of them are more like over the top turtlenecks and not underneath turtlenecks. So I think this will be cute. I might end up adding a sort of like ribbed collar. I'm not really sure. We're gonna see where we come out on on the yarn. But this is uh this is Cake Wool Co. This is their fingering sock base. So it is 75% wool and 25% nylon. Now I know there's some of you in the comments who are going to come for me, especially if you are like a very traditional knitter you're gonna be like why are you holding these different like materials together don't you know they're gonna block out differently i do so that's part of the process for me i'm actually going to stop crocheting this pretty shortly block it out try it on again see how everything kind of like stretches out or is going to stretch out and then i'm going to add the rest of it on essentially based on on the results of that I'm okay with taking my time on a garment and like blocking it before finishing it if it means I can get the perfect, the perfect garment. I think a lot of sweater knitters do this anyway, so you guys probably get it. I also think, I don't know, in the crochet community, it's just definitely not considered so gauche to mix materials like this. And I'm just drawn to work like this. I like different textures and and the way they interact with each other. And I love that this is something that eventually I think I'll be able to like ball it up really small and put it into my bag once it's done. If I wanted to like bring it with me, maybe I'll do a try on. I might add a clip of that. This is actually the back of it. You can tell that's where the seam is. I think this is, this is the front. And again, I modified the pattern. So I am using a 
4.0 millimeter and a 5 millimeter crochet hooks for this project. I think in Amazing Ish Grace's tutorial, she uses different crochet hooks. I think each of these are like a size up for her yarn, but again, it's kind of your preference and what kind of fabric you're going for. So yeah, those are my whips. I'm super excited about, about these. I do have a spinning whip on my Lendrum that I'm gonna pull off and then I'm also gonna bring forward these yarns and show them to you guys. All right, spinning whips. So that fine wool silk uh, yak blend that I had, no longer a whip. Those are actually some of the yarns that are drying back there. So I'll show you those in just a moment, but this is the really the only spinning whip that I have right now because I haven't put, I have yet to choose a new project for the shacked after plying all of these yarns last night. My, my shacked is empty. I don't even think, oh, I do have the bobbin set up on it, so I'm ready to go. This is what I've been spinning up on my Lendrum. It is an alpaca fine wool, sorry silk blend from Hidden Pastures Fiber Farm here in New Jersey. And I really like the way that this is spinning up. Somebody on my uh, TikTok live said it looked like snowy tree branches, which I think is very appropriate for November. So I've really had a lot of fun spinning this. I'm spinning it very, very, very lightweight. I have no idea what's gonna happen to this yarn. It might also end up in my shop update, like my, my new yarn drop. I don't know. It depends. If I finish this and a project calls to it, then it ends up being mine. It ends up in the stash. If not, it ends up, it ends up on the shop. Things are feeling still pretty damp, so I'm not, I'm not gonna twist these up quite yet, but you can see this is the rest of a day in the orchard by the skirted fleece mill in Pennsylvania. So I spun the other portion of this. I'd actually plan to spin all of this and turn it into a two ply. But if you look really closely here, you can tell that I decided to chain ply it and turn it into a three ply. Cause the two ply, I did about a yard and I was like, I don't like this. And I just decided <laughs> spur of the moment instead to chain ply it because sometimes that's, that's how it goes, honestly. And if a yarn is calling to be something different than what I planned, I'd rather have like a really, a product at the end of the day that I'm like proud of and is beautiful. I just, that two ply, I was like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And now I don't know what I would do with this yarn. So now these can be sister skeins to that yarn that I finished last week, that sort of like rusty color and the, the like fox reds, a lot of people were calling them, had like, a few stripes of this blue and green. Again, these will be sister skeins for that. That's a finished yarn. It's still drying. I finished it yesterday. The other yarn that I kind of finished yesterday and I didn't know if I was going to be able to spin. So if you watched my, uh, if you watched my last podcast, I talked about the bat and the roving that ended up being the skein. So this is Barbie and Alan go to Rhinebeck Ken is there, he just, he's in the car. He doesn't come inside. So this is just a really, really fun textured yarn. I spun it from that bat that I got from the classic Carter's booth at Rhinebeck. And actually this is dry. So I do think I'm gonna scan it up because I think that yarns like this look really nice in a skein. I did apply it with some pretty nice mohair silk that I had in a colorway that I just knew I was never going to use. And frankly, like, I know we call it thread plying, but I don't actually like to plot to thread ply with thread. Um, I like to core spin with mohair and silk as well. And I knew that I was probably gonna end up using that skein for that anyway later this week. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to ply this with something very nice. And I just love, Love the way it came out. <laughs> the the year of the Barbie, indeed. I mean, look at that. And again, if you are unfamiliar and you didn't watch my stash tour from last week, uh, this is, again, a bat that I got from the folks at Classic Carters and then some CBM roving that I got from one of the shepherds at Rhinebeck at New York Sheep and Wool. So essentially, like, all little art bats. And, oh, there was another... There was another friend at Rhinebeck that gave me some like pink, a little bit of pink Stellina and sparkles that I also just like added into here. I don't know. 
I don't know if those are going to come come up as much, but I really like this game. This was really fun. It's making me want to do some more textured spins, maybe try core spinning again. So that's what we're actually going to do in today's video. I am going to show you guys how I turn all of my recycled bits, all of my worms into new yarn. So thank you to the very helpful follower um, a few videos ago who mentioned that unfortunately the garment that I got, it was surged. You were correct. I'm still learning about garment construction and I thought I had picked out something that was going to work for taking apart easily to harvest uh, recycled yarn. I've done it before, but I think in previous cases, I have really just accidentally picked garments that were able to do that. So we're gonna go back to the thrift store at some point and look for more of those. I'll probably take you guys with me. But I did end up harvesting because I did try, obviously, to take apart the garment just to see. Uh, so I did harvest some of it, just some worms, and we're gonna use this as a base. Once I took it apart, it ended up being way softer than I thought it was going to be. Like when it's in the garment, it feels really like hard wearing. But when I took it apart, it got way floofier. So we're going to cut up these worms and we're going to take literally just my whole scrap bag because I have a bag of just loose ends of yarn that are too short or I don't really want to use for tags. I do use some upcycled yarn on as like yarn tags and stuff like that. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Like we don't need to buy more string. I already have so much string, but this is just all of the, all of the extra bits and extra pieces of random types of fiber. So I do need to take the fiber bits out. There's like neps in here and like sparkles and things like that. But the fiber, I don't actually want to like cut up. I do want to cut up the actual yarn bits. So I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to separate everything out and then I'll show you guys how I cut everything up and then putting it onto the carter and maybe, maybe we'll spin a little sample. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what we have time for today. Well, here we have our mostly unspun fiber. And then we have our big old container of worms of just all of the extras and loose ends of my hand spun yarns, commercial yarns. Again, some of this harvested yarn. We're just gonna, we're gonna cut it all up in this container with this pair of scissors and we're going to use it as some fun add-ins for a really fun textured yarn. All right, so I'm sure you can tell by the Six Sad World shirt, uh, but it's a, it's a different day. It's the next day. I, apologies, I was cutting up the string and I got really into it. I got really into it. I don't know, it's really satisfying. You just like chop up all this, all these little string bits. Um, And this is what's left. I chopped up all the string and then I carded some of it up before I went to work along with, again, some of this like extra little bits of fiber that have just been hanging around in that bag for a while. I'll show you how I do that in a second, but I wanted to show you just the little, the little guys, the little nests, I'll say, that I've made so far of carded and, and recycled fiber. It's giving it's giving nouveau. I am really excited to spin these up and see how it turns out. And you can see like the different types of fibers that have been blended in. I think there's some Jacob in here, some Lincoln long wool, uh, definitely some of that fine wool silk blend that I've been working with. These are just, these are going to be awesome. I'm really excited about the yarn that is going to result from that. I think I'm going to thread ply it with more. Uh, I have a lot of silk mohair in this one colorway that I'm not too pleased of. It's it's just one ball, but you guys know it's a it's a lightweight yarn. So one ball of silk mohair in a color that you don't like. It can take a while to get through. I am going to be, I think, thread plying it with that and I'll show you guys how I do some of the carding. Also, because it is the next day and it's Sunday, keep me soaking and blocking this this uh cute little bolero because I want to keep working on it and I think I've really gotten to the point where I just, I don't want to have to do a bunch of rows and then rip them all back because it's, it's silk. It's not even silk. It's alpaca. It's hundred percent alpaca, but it acts like a silk alpaca or a silk mohair in that ripping it back, like frogging it, it's just going to be a bummer. So it's almost done soaking too. You guys might end up seeing the blocked out object by the end of this episode, because we know 
fabrics like that dry like in no time whatsoever. Well, I've brought out my hand cards here to show you how I make. This is just one of many ways that I make like an upcycled and recycled yarn. There's there's different ways to do that. But today I'm just going to show you with hand carders because that is a really accessible tool that a lot of beginner spinners do choose to invest in. So again, these are from Golden Fleece Carters. This is not sponsored. I just, I like my carders. I think they are more affordable than some of the other brands that a lot of people recommend. And I think they will last just as long, if not longer. Already have it loaded up from yesterday with a little bit of texture. So again, I sprinkle in uh, some of this, some of this recycled yarn. And again, you can cut your bits a little bit shorter, a little bit longer, depending on your preference. This is a fine amount of texture to start with. And then I just take some of the extra wool bits that I want to get rid of, and I load them onto the carters as well. And I'm kind of just messing around with blending different colors and different wools together. Um, there is no method to the madness today. The point is to get a chaotic end product as the only goal. So this is a pretty quick way to do it. Again, we'll just load this up and then we're just gonna do some, some blending. I won't pretend to be the master hand carter. I think I'm getting better. I transferred it to the other one. And now we're going to blend it some more. Just brush it out. Oop. Transfer to this one. And you can see there's there's some yarn bits sticking around in this. But that's uh, because when I was sort of like brushing everything out, it gets, it adds some like, you know, toothiness and, and fluffs up the fiber so that everything kind of like sticks together and blends together. And some of it doesn't fluff up little bit lower but again I'll clean this before my next project some of this is still definitely going to end up in these cute little these cute little nests that I'm making oh see this is looking pretty good I like this yeah see look at that <laughs> I know some people wouldn't find that super duper fun but I don't know I just think it's a fun way to use your scraps and I'm using like more than half of my scraps by doing this. Granted, I still have some scraps left, but they will just be the base for the next project. I think also I'll spin this up really fast because it'll be super satisfying and and fun to move through all of the different nests, like to do one of the gray Jacob nests and then do one of the like super colorful ones. And then I wanna do a spiral ply. I think spiral ply show up texture really, really nicely. Again, all, all sort of blended up, getting that. You see how it's like, it's fuzzy now. They're ready to be incorporated into, I'm just gonna take all this, all this wool. Again, at minimum, even if this isn't really like your aesthetic, I, <laughs> I love Ashley Martineau um, on Instagram because she does a lot of like, she talks a lot about upcycling and recycling and reusing things that people traditionally consider waste. And I think that is something that, again, as spinners, we have a very unique opportunity to not only use wools that people normally just like don't care for or don't use, cough, cough, I'm talking about the down wools here, um, but we are also given the opportunity to use materials that people would traditionally consider waste, which is also really exciting and fun. I love playing with that idea. All right, we need more art bits. <laughs> the bits. I am all done making the upcycled droving, upcycled mini baths, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is what is left in scraps bag. Again, about about a half. We do have some leftover bits, and they are just going to go back into the scrap bag. But again, not that much, especially when we compare it to what I started with. I just. I had too many scraps. It was time. And then we're going to use, is this a flicker, a blending brush? I'm not really sure. I use it to clean, to clean off of my uh, carters and my blending board. Yarn is not wet finished. Like it's obviously it's finished in the sense that it is plied. I did ply it. However, it's not wet finished, and I'm not sure if you can tell, but it is spiral plied to some 
silk mohair on Scanus. You can kind of see the spirals better. And this one, it is just all of those scraps all spun up. Yeah, it is screaming Ashley Martineau. I mean, upcycled bat for sure. Very, very fun. Super fun spin. Did clean out my brushes to the best of my ability. Honestly, this is the cleanest they've been in a long time. So that's wonderful. I do think that right after this, I'm going to maybe film like a blending board video or something, or maybe just a little fiber ran. I'm not really sure. So if you follow me on TikTok, you might've noticed, I think I might be shadow banned. My uh, views have just been like super duper low out of nowhere. I don't really know. So I'm going to be doing more YouTube and Instagram content <laughs> this week. Maybe a blending board video or again, just, just a little fiber rant. I don't really know. Whatever, whatever I'm feeling like this week. I did. <laughs> so I was right. This dried out super quick. It's still a little bit damp, but I tried it on. I know some of you might think that absolute blasphemy, but at the end of the day, like I kind of want to stretch this out as much as possible to make sure. And I have to say, I'm so glad I blocked it out because it first, it fits so much nicer than I thought it was going to. Love when that happens, right? Okay. And then I found out that I really only need to do like ugh, a handful of rows. I'd say four, maybe five rows, depending on the stitch I want to do. And I want to do a little bit more orange, but I also want to end my sleeves on the heavier weight yarn to, to, to just give them like a little bit of weight. So I'm super glad that I did that and I'm definitely going to cast on another one almost, almost immediately after. So hopefully the next time you see this, it'll be a completed FO. I'm really hoping to finish this tonight. As always, fiber friends, if you are enjoying this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps me out. I appreciate all the love and support and all the comments from those of you who found me through TikTok, found me through Instagram, or just found me through YouTube, which I, I love to see. Thank you so much for seeing my face and being like, I want to see what that guy has to say <laughs> about yarn. As always, if you are interested in my other socials, I will link my TikTok and my Instagram below. I'll put my uh, wool to gold shop below as well. I am going to be doing a yarn drop this month. I have a lot of textured art yarns available right now, and I'm going to be putting up some uh, spiral ply mini skeins this coming drop, but I'm also going to be putting up some more traditional like two ply and three ply yarn. So if that's more your style, go check it out. If you watch to the end of the video, tell me, are you, are you a Daria fan? I hope you are too. I, I really enjoy Daria. I grew up during a time when I think Daria was definitely super cool. Comment below, tell me what you think. And if you don't, tell me what your like favorite throwback series is. Anyways, so again, thank you for coming along Fiber Friends. Go make something and I'll see you on the next episode.